Samvidhan Hindustan is, is a part of a larger idea and dream for the future of this country. Yes, 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 yes. Auspiciousness. Kam karoti kalyanam. Arogyam dana sampada. Shatru buddhi vinashaya. Deepa jyoti namastute. I fold my hands before the light. Madam who are to be organized and their efforts are yet to be streamlined. After having brainstorming sessions on the Indian constitution, it gives a very wrong impression to the public at large. So they are disturbed, they does not know what to do. So that's why in that sense the constitution day is important because we have an opportunity to grasp the constitutional values or the guidelines which are set in the constitution so that we can proceed in the proper direction and come to a, a situation where there are minimum legal problems. It is said that to, for a welfare state the judiciary is important along with vis-a-vis -vis the laws. So, if we want to have a rule of law, then it is the only constitution which can control the political uh, will, which is which, which swings like a pendulum from one side to other side. Because political will they depend upon the the majority. And for majority, they bypass the legal provisions or even at a situation, they, they, they does not feel anything wrong to even bypass the judiciary. So that's why it is important that we understand what is our constitution. In fact, our preamble of the constitution is very clear. It talk about the sovereignty of the state and sovereignty with equality, liberty, all those values are very well taken care of. So it is our duty to see that our liberty which we got after several years uh, liberation or uh, independence fight which our ancestors have done to protect it and in order to protect it it is necessary to be abide by the constitution. So then there is a possibility of radicalism. If you treat anything as a holy book, then there is a problem. Because you swear by that book. And if you swear by any book, it's a difficult situation. Now constitution doesn't say so. Constitution doesn't say that it is supreme. Constitution says that people of India are supreme. Constitution is a dynamic structure, it is a structure which is meant for the people and if people require, depending on the facts and the circumstances and the changing times, the constitution has to accept, accept and adjust to the will of the people and the requirements of the people. So to me, the true picture about supremacy, democracy in India is concerned, it is the people who are supreme. Now what do you mean by people being supreme? Does it mean that it is a rule of majority? Does it mean that whatever majority says is right? Does it mean that anything that is done by the majority is supposed to be right? No, it is not so. One of the basic features of democracy is that it is necessary that the righteous and the wrong things are to be distinguished. It is the rule of law that is supreme. It is the rule of law that has to prevail. It is, if you see, the constitutional features are such that you are entitled to have a government which is elected by majority. Now there is a difference between government being elected by the majority and the state being, being, being decisive by virtue of majority. No say that it is supreme. Constitution says that it is the people and the rule of law that is supreme. Therefore, 
don't treat constitution as something rigid, holy book, which can never change. Let us presuppose in so far as our constitution is concerned, which is enacted in the year 1915, hundreds years and years, years henceforth. If you want to interpret this constitution, you will not be able to interpret it based on the circumstances that may prevail at that time. The constitution... The opening words, as Mr. Pangam has already mentioned, we the people of India clearly demonstrate that the idea of sovereign and supremacy. People of India are therefore supreme. However, some of the basic structures of the constitution cannot be even amended. That is, at the moment, it is the law laid down by the Supreme Court. But if we go to the preamble, it demonstrates three basic features which are justice, liberty and equality and finally the fraternity amongst the individuals. Since we are speaking on the issue of constitution, I will request all the members of the judiciary or even uh, the bar members to keep with them a small booklet or even a slip of paper wherein the preamble is mentioned. It is like this, which I am keeping it with me in my pocket. We should be careful in using the words and expressing our, our uh, uh, views. Those should not be considered as hurting any other community. That is the basic structure of the constitution also. Our second thing is to assemble peaceful, peacefully and without arms. We all know Gandhi ji started this Satyagraha movement, but it was peaceful. But nowadays we know and we normally believe that any agitation, Satyagraha or other things is marked with the violence, road blockages. That by doing this, the rights of others are inflicted. So this has this is provided under the constitution that you have a right to assemble peacefully and without arms. And by doing this, you should not encroach upon the rights of other people. Now third thing is to move freely throughout the territory of India to reside and settle in any part of the territory of India. This is also important to understand what are the rights provided under the uh, under part 3. These rights must be looked into along with the fundamental duties as provided under, under Article 3, wherein it is provided that freedom of speech and expression must be protected by keeping in mind the duty to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood. 